And with that ready to go, um, welcome to Canva for Beginners. In this session, I'm going to uh, show you just some basic things in Canva for people um, who've never used it before, maybe just had a look, but um, would like to learn about some basic use. So I will be demonstrating live within Canva for most of the presentation. Um, there is not a slide deck to go along with this as we'll be doing this all live right within Canva. If you have not been to Canva before, you can Google it or just go to canva.com and you're going to wanna sign in with Google when you get there. So the Wetaskiwin Regional School Division a few years back now got us all signed up um, uh, with official educator accounts. So if you're signed in with your WRPS 11 account through Google, you'll have access to the premium features. So if you've ever used Canva on a personal account, uh, there's some things that are um, meant only for premium or for EDU. So you would have to pay money on that personal account to get access to those things. But with our education accounts, we um, are given that access. This includes for students. So students are able to log into uh, Canva with Google and use it the same as you can as a staff. If you have any questions that pop up along the way, please feel free to uh, put them in the chat and I'll make sure to address them uh, before we sign off today. I'm going to advance just one. So but just quickly before I, I jump into the actual live website, uh, I wanted to talk about beginning with the end in mind. So Canva is a very wide encompassing creation tool. You can create everything from uh, printable PDF documents to uh, full feature length. Uh, videos using this interface. So on this screen, you can see the first uh, image here. This is um, the search menu that you get, which I will show you live when you start to go just create something from scratch. Uh, this list is very comprehensive, uh, depending how you use Canva and what you create in there, this will actually populate with the things that you use the most. Um, but just in this view, you can see it's giving me options as soon as I go to create to do everything from a document. Um, they've got the social media things like it, different sizes of Instagram posts and Facebook posts automatically in there. So that's just that's going to create um, the shape and the size of your canvas. It's a really handy way to um, pick the appropriate sizing ahead right when right off the hop when you go to create. So just beginning with, you know, what are you going to be creating today? Are you looking to make something that's printable? Are you creating a present like a slides? presentation that you want to use with your students? Uh, is it a social media post that you're going to be sharing out on your social media? Lots of options. So as we um, get moving in, I will encourage you to choose something that can be uh, useful to you. And then over on the other side, this is the end. So what will that end product be? These are the options that you get when you um, go to take your design and export it out. So as I mentioned, we can take this out as PDFs for printing or sharing uh, digitally. It defaults to Microsoft PowerPoint presentations if you're exporting out of slides, um, but those can be imported into Google and they convert nicely into Google Slides um, with all of the elements actually editable. So. Um, that's actually a really useful feature for teachers if you want to use um, Canva to create presentations because you have access to a lot of different assets there, um, but you want to be able to put them into Google Slides for using with your students instead. And then we've got some image options. And then as I mentioned, you can actually create videos uh, and GIFs or GIFs, moving images with Canva also. That's what I'll be doing in the advanced session um, right after this one is looking at how to put some things together and create a moving picture or even a video. So with that said, I'm going to close that and pull in the Canva home page. Just give us a little bit more screen space there. So when you first um, go to Canva and get logged in, you'll be presented with the Canva homepage, which in itself 
um, can even be a little overwhelming if if you're a complete beginner. There's a lot going on here. Uh, one of my favorite things about Canva is um, that you don't have to have any design skills um, or knowledge to start using it right away. There's tons of templates that other users have created or Canva has created. Um, lots of ways to take things that are existing and then really customize them um, to how you like them. So just starting with this page, you see the big search bar right in the middle. Um, Canva does run on AI, so we can be really prescriptive and type specifically in this box what we are looking for, like looking for a presentation on geometry, and it would go through and find anything that anybody has shared within there. Um, if they have just some base templates or themes that match what you've searched for. So that's a really wide open search. Uh, the create a design purple button up in the upper right hand corner, that's the one where that menu that I was talking about. So this is a good place to start. If you know you're creating, um, you know, an email newsletter, for example, that's going to pop up here as an option uh, before I go to that. So that's to create new. Again, this will bring you a lot of search results. In fact, um, it'll pull up apps and things within Canva too, which are all much more advanced things. Over on the left, this is your sort of organizational space. Um, this toolbar will appear no matter where you are in Canva. Uh, for beginners, the templates is a really great place to start. Now, if I click um, on this little arrow here, it's going to um, take me to the templates and then I can drop down and you can see they actually have a whole category for education and that has a drop down as well and then from here I can filter by grade or search by specific subjects and also uh, the different types of resources so I'm just actually going to go ahead and click on worksheets and activities for right now so now I'm looking at those worksheet templates. This is anything that someone has created and shared that was tagged as a worksheet within Canva. Um, something I've learned is you can scroll forever when you hit some of these pages. It really seems that there is an unlimited amount of resources. Um, and again, of course, it's just uh, filtering these. I'm in a really general work sheet search but i have some filters up here at the top so i can start um, getting these a little bit more specific you'll notice that it there are some numbers beside the grade levels here so it's telling me how many different templates it has um, as worksheets at each of these grade levels and then i can apply more than one of these filters to really nail down and see what i'm looking for and then, of course, the searches is always here uh, as well if I want to just search up something really specific to see what's out there. Um, and let's see here if I've, I'm going to pick one of these. So when I find a template uh, in this that I like, if you click on it, it'll just open up in sort of a preview window. It's got some handy options. Um, it's right away pulled some other things that it thinks I might like down here. Uh, clicking on any of these would change which preview I'm looking at. Uh, if I look at this preview and, and the pages and determine that I want to use this, I've got that nice purple button and I can click customize this template. And this is where it's going to now take a copy of that template, um, store it into my organization in Canva and give me the opportunity to edit it. So in its full form, um, I'm just going to go over some of the, the basic editing within this template, uh, and then we'll uh, look at some, I want to show some other elements and things that we'll, we'll add to this one as well. So moving things around is how I figure out if we've got a couple of different elements here. So these, this is a shape, and if I'm double clicking, this is really similar to Google Slides. Um, text can be entered right onto these. If I single click on any of the elements, my bounding boxes come up and I can, of course, resize.
if I highlight the text within, I will get my text toolbar up top. So you can edit the text by using the toolbar here, making things bigger or smaller. We can open the color palette and change the color of that text. Let's see. I changed the color of the shape. The color of the text is the text button. So again, I'll do this one. If I have the text highlighted, I need to click the text color button. I can change that color there. Same um, as some of the Google things. Uh, if I make this change here, I can click the little copy style, this little paint roller icon and click that. And then when I click on this one over here, haha. -ha, it will change, um, make the same changes to that box. So that's a quick way um, that you can apply a style once you've chosen it. I am a big fan of the undo buttons. So if I make a change and I don't like it, I will just undo. Um, it's going to undo back as far as you've been in this editing session. So that's a really quick way to try things out and then go back to the way things were. Um, and then I'm going to show on this one also. So if I've clicked on this shape up top, I'm getting my shape editors. I could actually change what shape that is by clicking on the word shape. The color box will allow me to choose the color of the shape. Right next to the color box is the line style. So by default, um, there's not a border around the shape, but I can turn one on and then I can adjust how thick it is here. Notice that once I turned it on, an extra button appeared between these two. When I turn the border on, I get this to choose that border color now, which I don't want the same color. So with a border turned on, we've got the three um, different boxes here for editing the shape. And as I say, we can um, make the border thicker or thinner by just dragging this line. You can also enter a number specifically into the box if the slider is not cooperating. And there's just a few options about what that border can be styled like. So we can have some um, bigger or smaller dotted lines as well and we can round the corners. Um, I could almost turn this right into a circle. Well, I double clicked on this image. So this is a graphic. This could be a photo or, a, or a, a graphic element like this one is. Again, when I click on this, um, this one is actually an editable F SVG. So I'm seeing these color changing boxes up at the top. Uh, many of the graphics in Canva are color changing SVGs and you can modify the colors. So when you click on them, if you see those pop up, um, that means that each of those colors within that graphic can be edited um, to different colors should you choose. If it's a regular image, uh, you won't see these color boxes pop up in that case. So this is a table, as you can see. Um, I will show how to build tables from scratch. All right, so I'm just going to add a new page to this um, file right now. Uh, if I, at any point in time, want to go back to the home page and start again, um, I can just click this little file menu in the upper right hand corner and that's going to open the Canva menu for me. Um, I can create a new design from here, go back to that home page to look through some templates if I like. Um, and then it's as also giving me the most recent things I've worked on just, just to be helpful. So, <coughs> excuse me. Because I started with a template, it created these three pages for me. When you um, choose one of the other options, so if you go with create a design and you choose something from this drop-down list, 
it will open you automatically to this first design tab here. So whether you open to this automatically because of how you came in to create something um, or you started with a template as I did, um, the design tab is always this top one up here. And that's where um, you can go to find in this case, because I have chosen a design, it is, it's just automatically selecting some other things that it thinks I might want. I can continue to search here. Um, so I'm just gonna punch in fossil fuels. So that's the one I have and see if anything else uh, specifically comes up that I might wanna add into this. When I hover over these, if they have multiple pages, it'll pop up. I hope you can see that okay on your screens. It does pop up in the lower left-hand corner um, telling you how many pages there are. And if you just hold your cursor there, it will cycle through those pages. And one that has multiple pages like this, if I click on it one time, it will show me the pages that are there. It gives me the option to just apply both pages. Uh, be careful with this. It it will apply, if you apply both pages, it will apply it over what is there. If you want it to go say here on this new one, I'm gonna do each one at a time. So just clicking it here adds it into this page. If I click this one, it's actually going to overwrite what I, I just did. So I wanna click this and then I wanna add a new page to add that second one in if I want this here. It's also, um, so this has a color style applied. This is popping up right below the two pages. So this is a way that you could quickly um, just shuffle the colors in different ways. So um, if you wanna see how it looks with different variations of that color scheme, you can click that down at the bottom. Um, when, as soon as I started making those changes, this purple button popped up saying, apply this design style to all pages. So if I click that, it would carry that color theme through now uh, those other pages that I had imported as well. I could continue to add more pages. Now this is opened, uh, remember back I clicked on this, this actually opened a new tab within the design tab. So that's the templates I can search for. It's gonna find anything that's the same dimensions as what I'm working on. Um, and then based on my search, it gives you some helpful search things up top that it thinks you might like. And then here on the style side, is where uh, I could actually apply a different color palette to this design. So I've chosen the design, um, but I wanna make it match um, a different palette. In this case, I'm picking my brand palette, which I will talk about in my advanced session, but there's a bunch of different color palettes popping up here. So I could click on see all to see more. Um, just clicking them over again is going to cycle through just some random, variations of that theme and then again if i hit on something that i'm really liking i can hit apply to all pages and it's going to go through uh, and recolor all of the elements and words and things on those pages as well and does anybody have any questions at this point So that's templates and styles. We've we've barely um, begun. So elements are um, almost all of the things that you're going to come across in Canva designs. Um, there is uh, many categories of them. So when I, I click on elements, uh, first thing it's showing me anything I've used recently, that's very handy. Then I've got shapes, Graphics refers to what you would consider clip art. Um, so you may see things in graphics that are very photograph like. Um, generally, graphics are cut out so they don't have a background on them, though, depending on what you're doing, uh, you may see backgrounds on some of those as well. And again, when I click on those, that's actually opening into another sidebar. So we're within the elements window here. I can click on see all and then it's going to move me over into the shapes area. And then here are all of those default shapes. So by it, 
almost always picks a color you use all the time or something you're using in the design. So just like with those shapes that I was working with on the other pages uh, that were already on the template, um, you can put shapes in and work with them yourself too. As soon as you have it selected, again, there's that option to change shapes. We can adjust the color. Notice um, it's put the colors now from that palette I've chosen here under document colors. So I'm seeing those when I go into any color change. Um, this one doesn't have text, but I could edit that too. If I double click, I'll get my cursor to go ahead and type some words in there. I have to have the text selected and highlighted to edit it. It does give you those same default drop downs that we're used to in a word editor. If I um, am not happy with this text, I want to, it to be a little bit different on the box. I can also, you know, add text under the text button. So text is right under elements. Um, these would be the two that you would probably use the most when you're creating. I'm gonna go back. So I'm just gonna click on the graphics. Notice the first right under recently used, I've got magic re recommends. So, uh, you know, we have a theme, a topic. I've searched fossils already. So right away, um, Canva is guessing uh, what I might want on this for some graphics. And there's some great suggestions in here for sure for fossils. And as I say, all of these graphics, um, are generally cutouts like this. Um, this is actually a good example. So uh, when I was talking about being able to change colors, you'll notice this graphic does not have the ability, those little boxes aren't popping up up top to let me change the colors of this. So it does have photo editing abilities. It's being seen as an image. Now I'm pretty sure when I click this, um, I'm going to get this warning. I find this interesting. So it will warn you, even though it doesn't have the ability to change colors, um, it thinks it does. So I get this warning saying that that using any of these photo effects would affect the ability to change the individual colors on this. But we're not actually getting that ability. So I could use um, some of the things in here, mostly with these kind of graphics. Um, there's just some filters. So we could do some slight color adjustment to this by applying some of these filters or some really wild color adjustment. Um, also, if we find a graphic, you wanna change the colors, those little boxes aren't appearing, um, you can use that edit image and then the filters to, to do that. So back to um, our elements. I'm, I'm not gonna spend lots of time on these as, as you can see, there's many things in here. Um, as I mentioned, I think previously, Canva has a whole AI running underneath it. So you can um, ask it to create images for you. You can ask it to write text for you. Um, there's a lot of AI tools available as well that we won't be looking at uh, specifically in this session. Uh, photos, uh, for sure, that, those get used a lot. Lovely thing about the Canva photos is that um, they are free to use and legal to be published and you're not going to get anybody copywriting you. Uh, because of that education account, as I mentioned earlier in the presentation, uh, we have access to unlimited assets in Canva that can be used. Um, so I'm gonna punch in that fossil fuels and see what comes up for photos. And again, quite a, quite a number of photos coming up. I'll just click on one here so I can click. Just a single click on, on a photo here in the previews will put it out at a default size. And then, of course, you have the bounding boxes that you can do your resizing. Um, when I have this highlighted, we get a nice little toolbar up top. Um, this first button allows me to duplicate. That's really handy for uh, duplicating uh, icons or graphics over and over. Um, Canva is actually really smart. If you line two graphics up and duplicate them and then hit duplicate, it'll continue to line further ones up the same way that you had. I love some of the smart things that Canva can do. Um, now with this guy here, I wanna actually draw your attention to um, probably my favorite and most used elements. So um, 
videos and audio again lots of stock video and audio footage within canva that can be used in your projects and um, without worrying about copywriting uh, and there's some charts area tables are a good way for um Yes, there sure is, Jane. Uh, tables are a good way for organizing things like laid out easily on the page. So I'm going to show you uh, hopefully a couple quick ways to do that. And then here, um, these two frames and grids are photo placeholders. So these can be used to quickly make an image into whatever shape is being presented. Uh, frames are specifically mostly for individual photos, though some of them accommodate more than one picture. And then grids are uh, full page layouts um, for quickly popping in pictures. So when I click on grids, they start with a one photo grid. Um, then there's two photos and three photos. So these go um, in uh, increasing order. So if you've got nine pictures, you know you need to put on a page you can just scroll down until you get to where there are nine photos in these layouts uh, you can also search uh, on elements uh, you could search for a specific number of a grid layout and it would find the ones for you as well so with those I'm just going to click that to get back out of there i'm actually going to go into the frames so again um multiple menus always within canva so i'm in the frames elements frames and then now they have got all of these different groupings this is actually something they've cleaned up more recently and i'm a big fan because they used to just have all of the frames uh, right after the others so if i was specifically looking for the whole alphabet as photo frames they've got those grouped out for me and there's some one with some wides and blobs are very popular um, so here is if I click bobs, blobs, pardon me. So I've gone elements, frames. Now I'm in blobs. And I can, I think you can almost scroll unlimited. There's a lot of options in here. So if I pick one and pop it out, it's same thing, just going to default. I can bounding box. Now, Jane's question about um, rotating this little guy right here. So I can turn my elements by finding that that circle and it's going to pop up in degrees so if you're looking for that perfect um 45 now if i i turn a picture upside down the photo that i put inside it will snap in upside down so uh, there's my frame i'm gonna just make it a little bit smaller so it fits in this box i made here nicely and this is a photo so if i just drag it near the frame it's going to snap in um, that's fantastic it's actually frustrating when you don't want it to snap in because as soon as you get close at all it will um, grab that frame so sometimes when you're trying to put small graphics um, over other things if you hold down the control key while you're moving it around uh, it will not automatically snap into the frame once it's in there come on when i select this now the photo and the frame are one they will move around together if i delete it uh this is a change they've made that's lovely also it will pop up and say do you want to delete the image or do you want to delete the whole thing so this is how i could just delete the image out of there no i don't like that one i'm going to look for a different image uh that's i can delete it uh, i'm just going to go to photos again and find another photo so let's try oh maybe i like this one better the coloring pop it out here snap it into the frame i'm not happy with exactly which part is showing in the frame so i double clicked i'm going to do that again so you can see uh, a double click on this is opening up the cropping menu so uh if it was just a photo I can crop. So this is going to give me the opportunity to move this around within the frame. This is going to depend on the perspective of the photo because this was a wide angle photo and I'm using a square frame. I, I have 
the ability to move this around a little bit within here. So I notice though I can't go up and down because it has, has maximized it out. I could though choose to zoom in even closer within that frame. So you can see what's grayed out is the original photo. And then I can see here how much of it is coming through the frame. When I'm happy, I can hit my enter key or just hit done. And now I have adjusted where that photo is within the frame. By clicking on the little, the three little dots or right clicking on the image, you'll get this, the extra menu that has your regular copies and pastes and things in there, but it also has um, this detach image. So that is another way to take that photo out of the frame and, and put it out um, back onto the page. With Canva, if you leave things off the side of the page like this, um, it just automatically crops them for you. So that's a design thing that I see really often when I'm pulling up templates. Um, you know, a regular shape changes quite a bit when we just pull it off the page. A star looks nothing like a star by leaving some of it off. So it's not necessary to uh, crop these edges. That photo just sort of disappears off the canvas. And when I take this out, it will um, crop those page lines. Things that are not photos cannot be snapped into frames. So this is, you know, a shape. It cannot snap in there. This, uh, os oh, this one's a graphic. It's recognizing as a photo. It's snapping in. So the shapes won't. Uh, some of the graphics will not either. Uh, if I didn't want it there, again, that's that three dots or a right click and then detach. So this can be rotated. Notice that you do um, get some sizing. It, it tells you how, how big it is as you're moving it up and down. And then also, I'm not going to get into animating because that's a bit more advanced, but I am going to talk about layering. So position um, is referring to what's on top of what on your page or the layering. So if you select a particular element and then, you know, hit to back, it's going to go behind everything else on the page. And uh, we can quickly bring things to the front as well. To choose several or more than one elements, um, I want to do something with my whole page that's really not very pretty at all at this point. I can just click and drag. I can start outside of my page. Um, you'll notice this bounding box is getting really big because I have, you know, hung this picture off the side. So it is selecting the whole thing, um, but I don't need to be worried about that. So this is now giving me the chance to move these things around. And now when I click uh, the three dots here, I see a couple options. Uh, that refer to working with multiple elements. So I could um, automatically ask it to align these elements with each other, either by their left or their center or their right. I'll just show you what that does when I center them. So it's taken them all and aligned their middles up. I'm going to, I'm actually going to start a new page for you guys and go back, be a little bit more basic. I've got about 10 minutes. I was going to check the chat too. Um, I think I answered your question about rotating. So I'm just going to put in um, a box here. Now, when I go to resize the box using the corner buttons, it actually will allow me to uh, take this away from being a square shape. I'm going to use my undo. If I want it to retain its square shape, I'm going to hold down the shift key while I drag this corner box. And that's going to uh, make sure that it's retaining that perspective. Now I'm going to take this and click and use my duplicate to make another one. And I'm going to line it up here. You'll notice Canva gives you some lines. So it's showing me that right in this point, I have the center and the, the top and bottom of these two shapes aligned. Now when I hit duplicate again, it actually automatically puts the next one I'm right where it thinks I want. Now that I've put four in, I realize I, I didn't use the space on the page quite as well. So I'm going to just drag this one a little over closer to the edge and this one closer to the edge. So now that I don't have them evenly spaced, I'm going to click and drag around them. 
if you're trying to pick out specific items, like I wanted to say, just pick these two, I can click and hold down shift and it's going to select just the ones that I clicked while I was holding down shift. So it's really only selected those two objects and not the others. In this case, I do want them all. So I'm gonna make sure they're all chosen. And then now here, I do have them um, lined up, but they're not spaced evenly. So I can go to space evenly. And they have this handy little tidy up um, that we can use, which is going to do what I need. Uh, I also could have just used the little space evenly horizontally. Uh, notice because I don't have elements stacked, it knows that already. It's giving me that as an option, but then I can click to space evenly horizontally and it's automatically going to do that for me. Um, Canva is really helpful in that way because even um, as I'm drag dragging these boxes around, you'll notice that it shows you when you're matching the spacing of different uh, areas. When sometimes when you're doing this, it will snap for you um, and you don't actually want it to. So again, that control key um, removes all of that bounding and snapping and allows you to free move something around. Um, and then I've got this guy just a little bit out of alignment. Uh, I can use the lines within Canva. Again, I can grab these all together and quickly ask them to align. So center and it moved them all into one spot and I still have them all grouped. So that's probably a couple of the other things that I use uh, most often. Um, I love the tidy up. It very quickly knew what I wanted to do and put them uh, in a nice neat row for me. And then I could further um, continue to duplicate all of them at one time. And same thing, it's going to just magically know where I want to put that. All right, I'm very close to 10 after. I wanted to save five minutes um, for any questions. And then also, well, maybe I'll save five minutes now for questions and then one minute for uh, people to refill waters, uh, take a break if needed. If you're joining me for my next session, I'm gonna grab that link right now too. And put it in the chat. If you have a question, feel free to ask. Otherwise, feel free to have a five or six minute break before your next session.